Welcome everybody on YouTube and of course all the wonderful people here in Twitch chat as well. Thanks for joining me. We are on the third um, set or edition, third edition I guess, third episode, whatever you, uh, descriptive word you'd like to use there, of our Ravnica Allegiance set review. We are now to the color black. We are going to be going through every card. Um, there are 30 black cards, just like there were 30 white, 30 blue. And we are going to be giving it a constructed grade. So we're looking at standard only. We're giving a grade A through F to kind of show you our grading skill. If you're, if you're uh, looking at the, if you're at the YouTube video, you can check down below in the info panel for the grading scale. Also putting it up on here for a little bit to kind of remind you, or if this is like your first video that you were uh, watching. So an A is a format all-star among multiple archetypes. We're looking at cards like Jade Light Ranger, Lava Coil, Adanto Vanguard, Ravenous Chupacabra, and Search for Escanta. These, these aren't necessarily the absolute best cards, because you, you can be like an A+. That'd be like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, or History Banalia, or Niv Mizzet, uh, for example there. Bs are format staples among multiple archetypes, including sideboard or defining cards in a single highly played archetype. We have cards like Merfolk Branchwalker, Lightning Strike, Takali Honor Guard, Duress, Sinister Sabotage, cards like that. Uh, C is a card that sees some regular amount of play in the format or is an important card in a single highly played archetype. So it's like Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Playcrafter, and Radical Idea are my uh, examples there. And a D is a card that will see just a very slight amount of play in the format, or maybe have a fringe archetype built around it. I have like some fringe sideboard cards like Crushing Canopy and Invoke the Divine, or a card like Gutter Snipe or Lookout's Dispersal sees a very slight amount of play, or a card like Lich's Mastery or Haphazard Bombardment, cards that have fringe archetypes built around it. I think Carnage Tyrant I'd have as an A and not an A+. It's, it's, it's right in there uh, between the, the two, I think. Um, I think it's I think Carnage Tyrant is more Jade Light Ranger than Teferi in my opinion, but I know a lot of people think Carnage Tyrant is just A plus, certainly. So I, I don't I don't you know I I certainly see the reasoning for that, but I I kind of feel it's a little worse. But yeah. Anyway, an F is a card that sees no play whatsoever. So talking about like draft commons or like rares that are not playable, like Oathcrow Dryads, Alpine Moon, A Johnny's Last Stand, Fraying Omnipotence, and Fleet Swallower. So I have an example there for each of the colors. So here we go. Yeah, I only have Search for Scant as an A because usually I play a couple of them at a time, but I think it's, I think it's certainly an A. <laughs> All right, uh, first card in black is a rare, Awaken the Erstwhile. 3 BB, each player discards all cards in their hand, then creates that many 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. Huh. This is a weird card. A lot of people are saying D and F. A lot of, a lot of stuff like that. So, usually, all right, so each player discards all cards in their hand. Okay, just thinking of that, that kind of effect. Whenever we see that kind of effect, usually what that what you're trying to do there is you're trying to play an aggressive deck where you're going to empty your hand and you're playing against like a, a control deck or a slower deck where you're making them discard all the cards in their hand. You know, like that's that's something that that's that's a, a definitely a, a beneficial effect. The problem here is though. Like, if it was actually just that text, I think it may be better. The problem is the second part. It says, then creates that many 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. Of course, they don't come into play tapped or anything, uh, which usually zombie tokens come into play tapped because they have, like, slow mode instead of haste. Um, but, like, if you, if you, like, empty your hand against the control deck and then you're like, all right, control deck, discard your hand, and they have six cards in hand, they make six 2-2 two -two zombies. So that's kind of bad for you. The thing is, if you already emptied your hand, can you beat six two two zombies? So, okay, the first part of the effect is very powerful. Making a control deck like a Teferi deck discard their all their hand, their cards, all their cards. I mean, that means they're not hitting more land drops. You know, like if it's like if you're on like turn five on the play, your opponent has like four lands in play. They're not hitting more land drops. Even if they draw like a Teferi. They're not, they, you know, they have to draw like a land and then Teferi kind of thing. So making them discard their hand is great. 
they will be able to make a lot of 2-2 zombies. So in order for this card to be good for you, you um, <laughs> you certainly want uh, you certainly want the ability to beat a horde of zombies. So maybe you have a lot of flying creatures. Maybe you have uh, yeah, maybe you have like flying creatures. You're aggressive. You're like have like a good start. You make them discard their hands so they can't catch up, and you can finish the game off in the air. Yeah, so such a niche card. I like I like Underdog's idea though. What if we're just playing this in a Nullhide Ferox deck? No, that doesn't work. You can't you can't play this in a Nullhide Ferox deck because Nullhide Ferox says if an ability your opponent controls makes you discard, so that doesn't work. The opponent would have to have Nullhides. So yeah, that that doesn't work. Um, yeah. So so it's only good if you're playing against a deck where their cards are worth more than a bunch of 2-2 zombies. Like, maybe they have a bunch of Wraths and Teferis and Nemizits and stuff like that that are worth more than 2-2 zombies. And you have to be able to beat a bunch of 2-2 zombies also. Um, you know, if you just if you just play a bunch of, like, you know, 2-2s and 3-2s on the battlefield, and then you're like, all right, now turn your hand into a bunch of 2-2s, you're not going to really win that. So, um, this is kind of a build-around card, for sure. But it is really powerful of just getting rid of all the cards in the opponent's hand. Very powerful if it works, but you certainly need to build your deck around it. I'm going to go with the D for this card, but just, there we go. I think it's an interesting card to kind of talk about there. All right, uh, Bankrupt in Blood is our next card. It's an uncommon one in a B, sorcery as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice two creatures, and then you draw three cards. Sacrificing two creatures is a huge cost, and I'm not I'm not really into it. I mean, you'd certainly want to play it with with cards like a uh, Stitcher Supplier kind of thing. Um, it it could be okay in aristocrat style decks, um, but it is yeah sorcery speed. I I'm not really seeing it. I'm thinking uh, yeah maybe maybe a D maybe. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are saying like F and, and D plus and stuff like that. Track team is really all about that F. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with it, like a, a D minus D minus maybe we'll barely see some play. All right. Blade juggler four and a, four and a black for a three, two with spectacle two and a black. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to you and you draw a card. All right. Even if you're casting this for the spectacle cost. So it's two and a B for a three, two, you enter the battlefield and draw a card. That's a perfectly fine card. And that card would be like a C if it was like always spectacle of cost. So that's like the, the highest upside is like being a C. Sometimes it's going to cost five mana though. That's going to be an F. Definitely cool art there. Blade brand one in a B target creature gains death touch until end of turn, draw a card. If you're playing like a, a token type deck or like, you know, decks with a bunch of creatures you don't mind sacrificing, all that kind of stuff, two mana draw card is, you know, reasonable, especially for black, you know, kind of like cycling. That's honestly not that bad, just two mana draw card. And then you can turn like one of your crappy creatures and to give it death touch to be able to fight anything, be able to fight a, a Carnage Tyrant kind of thing. Um, yeah, you can give it to Chain Whirler. Ooh, this was plus Chain Whirler. Where you just, ugh, yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to kind of give this card a, a C minus. It is instant speed. Yeah, you can play Chain Whirler plays that. I'm going to give this a C minus. But I could see this like if you're an aggressive deck and your opponent's trying to stabilize, playing Crackling Drake to stabilize or whatever creature they're they're trying to block with. And you're just attacking with a bunch of creatures. You just give whichever one they block Death Touch draw card. Kind of keep on going. That draw card certainly makes this certainly makes it playable whoever said this plus chain whirler you have a sick mind <laughs> yeah yeah and it recycle and it you cycle itself yeah that plus chain whirler is pretty pretty nice so there we go i'm going to c minus is it better than stat status statue potentially it's that same level i think as status statue uh I, I could see it being better. It's it's going to be better. For, yeah, I could actually just see it being better than Status Statue. Um, yeah, and it's removal that bypasses Dive Down. Yeah, like they're trying to dive down their Crackling Drake, and you're like, nah, nah, that, that Crackling Drake dead. All 
Um, all right, we got Blood Blood Mist Infiltrator, two and a black for a 3-1. Whenever Blood Mist Infiltrator attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, Blood Mist Infiltrator can't be blocked this turn. Yeah, that's an F. Not seeing any play. Next up, we got Carry On Imp, three and a B for a 2-3 flying. When Carrion Imp enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard if you do gain two life. Yet another F. Those cards aren't seeing any play. Um, Catacomb Crocodile, four and a B for a 3-7. It's got a whole lot of flavor text. Maybe the most flavor text in the set. That's a lot of flavor text. It's an F. All right, uncommon. Clear the stage. 4B, instant. Target creature gets minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Not even to play. There's a lot of better things we can be doing. That's also an F. Hmm. Black's not getting any some, some good commons and uncommons here. Consigned to the pit. Five and a black sorcery. Destroy target creature. Consigned to the pit deals two damage to that creature's controller. That's an F. Hmm. Where's it? Cry. Next up, we got an uncommon. Cry of the Carnium. Carnarium? Carnarium. Cry of the Carnarium. There we go. That, that sounds correct. Hey, boo. We got one BB. For a sorcery, all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Exile all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. If a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Yeah, it replaces Golden Demise, right? It's the Golden Demise has Ascend. This has Exile them, which exiling is certainly much more important. And um, and if creatures would just die this turn at all, exile them instead. So like you know, if this happens like before combat kind of thing. Yeah, and if Afterlife's a thing, this is a must. Gets rid of Arclight Phoenix for good. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so this is certainly much better than Golden Demise. I would already put Golden Demise as a C. So I'm, I'm thinking this is a B. I'm thinking this is a, you know, it's going to be mostly a cyborg card, but this is certainly going to see some main deck play. This is a, a good, solid B, especially if the format is faster. If you get, like, quick Rakdos uh deck kind of thing yeah the downside is it's not an instant a lot of the you know like the black sweeper effects like this basically are never instants um yeah let's go a good solid b uh where can you find the grading chart um you can find it on the youtube channel for the i have the the white video up on youtube right now i'm loading the Loading the blue video, but on the white video, you can find the grading chart there. I'm getting the link here. So you can find it in the info panel right there. All right, next card. Dead Revels. Three and a B for the sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and it has a spectacle cost of one and a B. We'll go ahead and say Spectacle uh, one time. So Spectacle is you may cast this card, you may cast a spell for its Spectacle cost rather than its mana cost if an opponent has lost life this turn. So that's what Spectacle is. Um, and so for the rest of the cards of Spectacle, I'll just be referring to that. So, so this is double raised dead. Uh, you get to return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand for four mana. Uh, but if you have Spectacle, you only cost two. Yeah, so it's certainly a much worse Find Finality. I think you would just much rather play Find Finality basically all the time than this card. So, if. All right, up next, Debtor's Transport is 5 and a B for a 5-3 with Afterlife 2. This is another F. Yeah, they have been doing really good with the flavor text for Allegiance for sure. All right, next up is one of my least favorite cards in the set. I don't like this art. Um, this art is scary. Like, Rakdos is supposed to be the entertainers. Who's getting entertained by this? This, this That's not entertainment. 
That is... I do not want to look at this... This card at all. Like, I, like, don't want to even... Like, I don't want that in my limited deck. I don't want to look at that card. <laughs> Alright, so this is... Anyway, this is 2 and a B for... Target player reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards this card. So it's Thought Seize for three mana, and it has Spectacle one uh, for just a, just a single black. This is a solid card. This is a good card. Um, if you've been playing Standard, you probably know how good Thought Erasure is. Being able to have all the information in the in the game of knowing your opponent's hand, having that not be hinted information, being able to to know their hand and how to play around their hand, also take their best card from their hand is a very very powerful effect. Obviously, um, in like the late game when a, when people don't have hands, this is not a kind of card you want to draw. But anytime early, it's a very powerful effect. So this one costs three mana on its for face value. Three mana is certainly a lot to pay for that effect. Maybe too much to pay for that effect. Um, but if you get to spectacle this and only one mana, that's really nice. This is the kind of card that spectacling it even on like turn four. Like let's say you, you deal some damage on turn four and you get to spectacle plus play a three drop. That is awesome. Um, you know, like that's still really good. So this this is a really good card. Um, yeah, and it's like three mana is like basically like top deck mode kind of thing. Um, yeah, so this is this is a good card, I'm thinking. And I think this is awesome with Theater of Horrors. Uh, that we'll talk that we'll see later on the red black enchantment that uh, whenever you have spectacle you can start playing your spells that you that you exiled if you exile this with theater horrors because you'll have the spectacle turn on it's really good there um but yeah i think this is i think this is definitely better like this is kind of between an a and a b we have lots of people saying b with this um duress is like kind of like my level of a b uh so is this card better than duress um it's certainly more main deckable um no we've gone through white and blue already black is the third color uh so far uh the white video is up on youtube right now and the blue video will be shortly but of course hopefully you stick stay with me here and then you can watch those afterwards if you're just joining us i think this is kind of between yeah so a lot of people think this is kind of between duress and thought erasure um so people say it's not better than duress I think it's kind of right right around there. Um, it's it's definitely not better than Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure is like the best one. I think Thought Erasure is an A. Thought Erasure is certainly an, I think Thought Erasure is an A and Duress is a B. Um, and I actually kind of think this is between those. I think this may be a little bit better than Duress. Duress is, um, you know, it's great against spell heavy decks, but I actually kind of think it's a little better. I th I'm going to give this a B plus. Um, it does go in different decks, kind of thing. Yeah. I'm going to give this a B plus. You're certainly wanting this for the spectacle cost for sure. All right. Hopefully I don't have to ever look at that card again. Next up, Font of Agonies. This is certainly an interesting card here. This is a rare. Just B for an just cost one black mana for an enchantment. Whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on Font of Agonies. And you may pay one in a black, remove four blood counters from Font of Agony's destroy target creature. Alien Toy Shop says jank. I don't know, man. Destroying creatures is really nice. So there's a lot of ways to pay life in standard. Um, first, first let's, let's go to, it says remove four blood counters. Let's talk about removing four life. What if, like, there's, there's two cards that are, are solid standard cards that remove four life. You have... Um, the expensive one under Realm Lich, which is also which is green black, which is the same kind of colors here, but it is pretty expensive. But you also have uh, a Danto Vanguard. Like, what if what if you're just playing like this with like a Danto Vanguard? People pay four life with a Danto Vanguard a lot, and um, and uh, that's that's that turns on your just pay to destroy a creature, activate a Danto again, pay to destroy another creature, kind of thing. Uh, then yeah, a lot of people are talking about other cards. Other cards that pay life, we have Shocklands. Those go ahead and pay life immediately. That's two life. Uh, Midnight Reaper is a good card that draw, draws you cards. 
uh, additional ways to, to pay life on your own. Doom Whisper is awesome because you can just Doom Whisper. You can just pay as many as you need all the time in, in intervals of two, uh, depending on how many creatures you want to destroy. And then, of course, yeah, Argyle's Bloodfast is great with this because you get to pay life for Argyle's Bloodfast to be able to um, to uh, to draw cards. But then also, Bloodfast, because you're paying all this life, you're probably going to have a low life total. So with your low life total with Bloodfast, you can flip it and start gaining life by sacking other creatures and things like that. So it's one counter per life loss. So yeah, so if you if you do pay for life with like a Danto Vanguard, that's four counters, and then you, you get that. Uh, how bad as is it as a top deck? Horrible. Horrible. Yes. This is certainly a card you need to build your archetype around in order to play this. So I'm going, yeah, I'm going D+. Plus. This is certainly a way. This is certainly a card you need to build your archetype around. I don't think you're just going to put this in like uh, uh, just a regular like like a black white or like green black. Like you're not putting this in like green black mid range that just has like Midnight Reaper and Doom Whisper in it. You know. So this is a fringe archetype that you build around. That's like how we have Haphazard, Bombardment, Lich's Mastery, that kind of stuff. I guess so. This is kind of the definition of a D. It's kind of kind of that kind of thing. Um, yeah, Vona pay seven life for yep, and then get him back with life link. Yeah, Vona, Vona would be great with this. Um, oh, Midnight Reaper is deal damage. My bad, my bad. Thank you, thank you. Midnight Reaper is deal damage. Um, but yeah, still, still a sweet card. Uh, so not a, like you, you do need to be playing against like a creature deck that like you know you, you are able to destroy all their creatures kind of thing. Um, but yeah cool card that you can build around so go with the d as the fringe archetype build around but i like it all right we have a common here grotesque demise two and a b instant exile target creature with power three or less i could see this seeing some play somewhere this is i'm thinking this is i'm thinking this is a d it depends on how important exile is and the cheap cards it's like it's like how important do you need to get rid of something else I don't know. There's so much good black removal. Never mind. I'm going F. Never mind. I'm going F. There's just too many good removal spells in black. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go F. But, yeah. All right, we got a rare. Gutter Bones is black for a 2-1. Gutter Bones enters the battlefield tapped. Um, and one in a black. Return Gutter Bones from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only during your turn and only if an opponent lost life this turn. Uh, comment here in chat. Sacrifice decks are a thing, and Gutter Bones is the best thing we have in standard. Yeah, Gutter, gutter Bones is, is solid. Uh, let's see. Some grades here in chat. We got a lot of people saying... Okay, we got uh, C plus B, D, D plus, D minus, C, D, F... A lot of people saying F with this card. This card's certainly not an F. Um, or may maybe they were talking about the, the last card. Maybe I was late on some of those grades. Maybe they were talking about the, the previous card. Um, hey, Eddie. Yeah, so we got lots of Bs. Uh, so this card, this card's certainly good. I think this is... I think I think this is so. Black two one. We don't really have like good one drops in black right now, and I think this is going to see a lot of a lot of play in, in in like the black aggressive decks. A deck that I think that this sees a lot of play is like we talked about kind of like aristocrat style decks. Um, I think a card for aristocrat style decks that I that I actually think could be um, a big player in our upcoming standard is gruesome menagerie from guilds of ravnica that's three bb sorcery return a one drop two drop and three drop from the battlefield into play and gutter bones you know kind of fits that like you're going to need one drops for that kind of card and gutter bones helps fit there um i think i actually think this is this is a pretty decent card like if you're playing even theater horrors or experimental frenzy black red burn kind of decks you're going to want one drops that you get out of your hand you want to you want to keep clearing your hand um, and this, this card can certainly do that. Um, yeah, so, and, and cards that need sacrificing. Um, there's also the, the new red-black creature that gives all your creatures plus one, plus zero, which would make this a three-one. And, uh, and, like, whenever they die, it deals one damage to any target, like that, that creature. 
Um, that uh, this card's awesome there. I think this is a solid B plus. I think this is going to see a lot of play in different archetypes and everything. Um, or maybe maybe B to B plus. I think this is like your Merfolk Branchwalker range. I think this is a, a really good card. Yeah, Judith is that other card. I think this is this is going to see a lot of play in different decks. Um, I'm going I'm going with a B with this card. I don't think that that even like it is it is kind of prohibitive to get back into play. You have to pay two mana and it only goes back to your hand. So it's basically three mana to get back into play if you want to just kind of look at it like that. Um, but I think just having good one drops is is nice. Like I would I put get to lava runner right now as a B in current standard, and I think this is very going to be very similar to get to lava runner, um, maybe even a little more play than that. So I, I think I think B or B plus. So we've done we've done white and blue so far, and we're currently on black. All right, next card is a common ill-gotten inheritance three and a black enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, ill-gotten inheritance deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. Or you can pay five and a black, sacrifice ill-gotten inheritance. It deals four damage to target opponent, and you gain four life. That's just gonna be an F. Um, if you have some kind of pillow fort deck. And you just want a win con where you don't actually need like a win con. It just deals one damage and you gain a life every single turn. And you just want to gain the life, every, like gain a life every single turn as you're trying to pillow fort and stuff. Sure, I guess, but I'm going F. Yeah, you, you two right there. And I think, yeah, you can see that's my YouTube channel. Down here also, youtube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG. It's that, that black color doesn't show up that well, does it? Gone through. Let's see what if we do purple there. Does purple show up better? Blech, that doesn't show up very good either. All right, last chance. I'll get back to get back to this. Um, all right, let's do this color. Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. Ah, uh, I'm messing it up. What, what color looks good on... Why is it so hard to find a, a color that looks good on gray? Okay, there we go. Whew! All right. Next card. Uh, Noxious Grodian. Grudian? Grud... Grudy, Grudion, Noxious Grudion, uh, two and a B for a two-two Death Touch. That's an F. Oh, where did that one? Of course, we're talking about standard here, going through these. Uh, but yeah. Uh, next up, Orzov Enhancer, one and a B for a one-two with Death Touch and Afterlife one. Huh. The fact that it has death touch and can trade it can trade up with basically anything and it has afterlife one um is this all right so uh what's the all right so the the explorer the one two explorer creature in black seeker squire you know seeker squire of course sees play is like one two explorer better than one two death touch afterlife one Probably not. I mean, explore. You know, you'll rather have the explorer if you're playing Wild Growth Walker, of course. But yeah, people are saying this is maybe probably good for the Aristocrats decks. Um, so yeah, with the Aristocrats decks, like you're gonna want to sacrifice effect, and it it does trade and then leave a body. It's really not bad. Uh, it's a two drop. You can get back with like a Johnny adversary of tyrants, like you're basically getting back like your death touch thing and then you you know trade you make another spirit kind of thing what's this what's better this or the one one that deals you one and draws a card i think this because this actually does things like the one one just chump blocks so like the one one is basically the same as the afterlife one token right because it's just going to chump block this actually trades with a card um so yeah it's not awful but so 
I think this is, yeah, probably like a C minus. I don't think this is maybe as good as, like, I have Plague Crafter as a C. I think this is maybe like a C, C minus, kind of archetype dependent. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go with the C minus on this. I like that. Yeah, it could kill, like, you know, base, best case scenario, kills Carnage Tyrant, you know, something like that. Um, I think I like Playcrafter more, and play, I have Playcrafter as a C, so, yeah. Yeah, my Cs are like just kind of like the normal cards of the format that you'll see sometimes, you know, like Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Radical Idea, and Playcrafter, those are cards I have as C. Orzov Racketeers, 4B, 3-2. When Orzov Racketeers deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card, and it has Afterlife 2. F. Pestilence Spirit. So rare. 2B, 3 2 Menace, Death Touch. Instant and Sorcery spells you control have Death Touch. This card is awesome. Hey, QQ Image. All right, let's start with just 3 2 Menace, Death Touch. Let's start with that. So 3 mana, 3 2 Menace, Death Touch. So Menace means you can't be blocked by. Uh, just one creature. You have to be blocked by two or more creatures. So you have to. You, so if you want to block this with two creatures, they're both going to die because it has death touch. So you, you're not going to want to throw two creatures in front of this unless you have like two tokens. But for the most part, if people are just playing like normal creatures, they're not blocking with this. So this is, yeah, this has pseudo unblockability. Um, so it's it's kind of a, a three man three mana three two unblockable. Um, you can kind of think of it like that because people aren't blocking double blocking with like normal creatures for the most part. Um, and then yeah, the instants and sorcery spells you control have death touch. That's kind of crazy. Uh, that's that's like real weird. Um, yeah, you know we're definitely thinking Rakdos burn right. Like that's what we're kind of think, thinking about. Um, does that mean you start putting a bunch of bad cards in your in your deck? Like yeah, like like radiating lightning and uh, dual shot. Um, and things like that like you just have like four mana you play pest like you know you, you untap with four mana and you just play pestilent spirit and dual shot and just like deal deal one damage to two things and just kill them both is that like some, is that like a, a combo you're putting in your deck um is that is that something we're doing so there are a, enough good burn spells so we don't need bad ones okay yeah like fiery cannonade fiery cannonade would just kill all non-pirates yeah, cannonades like Nova. Um, it would kill the spirit too, though. But then, yeah, you can just play a bunch of shocks, lightning strikes, stuff like that. So yeah, just yeah, you're just playing a bunch of shocks, I guess. Then right. So so you're spending two. If if you think like four mana, pestilent spirit plus shock, you're spending two cards to make one chup ravenous chupacabra. But then, of course, your Ravenous Chupacabra has Menace and Death Touch, and also all your other instants and sorcery spells have Death Touch, so your Chupacabra has like those stats also, and it's a 3-2. Um, yeah, I, I like the card a lot. I think it. I think it's very good. I think it's good in uh, definitely good in, in red-black uh, aggro burn decks. I think it's just good in uh, pro just black aggro decks. I think this is probably like an an A minus. This is gonna. This is a really good card. But you know it's, we're talking talking through like the this, the card and everything. But I think this is like an I go with an A minus. Hey Dash Assault, thank you so much for that sub. I do appreciate it. That sub number three on the day. That's a good point. If you're playing like a if you're playing like the Rakdos Burn deck and you're playing against Stompy, you you kind of need uh you kind of need those need a card like that so you can you can be able to. To kill all the the stompy creatures, I'll kind of go go through white, so white, blue, black, red, green, multicolored. So we are on black right now. There you go. People are like asking, like, you know, like, what colors have we done or, or anything. I'm gonna this, so I'm going to give this an A-. I think this is a very good card. I see lots of play and lots of different archetypes. Um, 
That's what I'm going with here. Okay, next card. Plague White. One in a B for a 2-1. When Plague White becomes blocked, each creature blocking it gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's a definition of an F. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Another rare here. Uh, yeah, the art is S tier in the set. Art's just the last like year of Magic cards. The art is awesome. Art is great with Magic cards these days. Priest of the Forgotten Gods. 1B for a 1-2. So 1-2, before we kind of get into the ability, 1-2 body, not very good. Um, not doing very much in combat. It's not really trading with things in combat. So 1B for a 1-2, really weak. You're going to need a lot to make that good, right? Like, you know, it doesn't have an enter the battlefield effect, you know, like explore one or something like that. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the enter the battlefield effect. So it does have tap, sacrifice two other creatures, any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature, you add BB to your mana pool and draw a card. So unfortunately it can't sacrifice itself. I think this, because it, it has like the weak body and everything, you certainly would want it to sacrifice itself. But if you have Priest of the Forgotten Gods out and it's not summoning sick, and you have two creatures you don't mind sacrificing, and it's not, it, it can be tokens, you know, like it can certainly be tokens. It just has two other creatures. It doesn't say non, non-token non creatures. So um, if you sacrifice the two other creatures, you get a really powerful effect. So your opponent, you know, it says any number of target players and that kind of stuff, but, you know, we're talking standards. So you have one opponent. So basically your opponent loses two life and sacks a creature. So it's like, it's basically play crafter, right? So you... If you use the ability, you get Playcrafter, where they sack a creature, plus, or like Eldest Reborn if you want, like El the first chapter of the Eldest Reborn, plus they lose two life, plus you draw a card, and you put two mana in your mana pool. That is a lot to get. That is a lot to get with this effect. So, yeah, not Planeswalker, that's a good point. You're getting a whole lot for this effect. Um, remember how I was just talking about Gruesome Menagerie earlier? You can sacrifice like a, a one mana card and a two mana card, add two to your mana pool, your Gruesome Menagerie now only costs three mana, you can return those things back into, into play, and with a three drop also, you know, for example, you know, you just sacrifice two, like whatever, two of the, the CMCs, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so it is a lot of setup. You, you know, you, you do have, like, this two-mana two, two mana card that's a creature that's vulnerable to everything, dies to everything. Standard's going to be kind of fast. You have to be able to have it survive and have two other creatures also surviving, and you have to be willing to sacrifice those two other creatures. It's, it's asking a lot, but, what you know, for this payoff, you're getting paid off quite a bit, even though it's asking a lot. You're getting paid off a whole lot. You are... Um, you know, like making your opponent sacrifice a creature is can be very beneficial. If you're playing against other aggro decks, that's not going to be beneficial. That's not going to be that beneficial. So, yeah, and it's a spectacle trigger as well. So, the more aggressive your opponent's deck is, the worse Priest of Forgotten is. The more dirtily and like like playing this against is it Drakes, for example, is awesome if you get the trigger. Like you know, they only have like certain like small number of creatures that are all very good, kind of thing. Overall, I think this is pretty fringe because it has so much setup and everything like that. Um, I think I'm going to give this like a, a C minus. I think this is the kind of card that looks really exciting and people are excited to play, but then but then ends up not seeing basically any play. I could kind of see that, um, or sees just a little bit of play in like and like I said, like a gruesome menagerie deck. Like you can bring this back with some other creatures. They're kind of dealing with the other things and. Um, and everything. So, yeah. But it's certainly, it, it's certainly um, an exciting card and one that's fun to talk about. But I think when you go C-, minus, uh, it has a really high upside, though. Like, the, the potential, the potential for this card is really high. You know, like, this card has a lot of potential. 
Um, I'm going with a conservative rating for sure there. All right, we got Rakdos Trumpeteer up next. This is a common. It's one in a B for a 1-3 Menace. You can pay three in an R to give Rakdos Trumpeteer plus two, plus zero until end of turn. That's an F. All right, the, the Black Mythic is Spawn of Mayhem. 2BB for a 4-4. Four, four. Flying Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals one damage to each player. Then, if you have 10 or less life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Spawn of Mayhem. And it has Spectacle for 1BB. This card is amazing. It is one of the best in the set. And I am giving this an A. I don't think it's A+. Plus. It's close to A+. Plus. I think it's closer to A plus than A minus. It's going to get quenched. <laughs> um, but I think this is a solid A. So, you know, just the four mana, four, four flying trample. I talked about before when we talked about the Sphinx. I was not really into four mana, four, four flying with Sphinx. This has trample, which is certainly a lot. You know, I like I like trample a lot. Um, but it does have the, just the upkeep ability of dealing one damage to each player. That's going to be really important for Spectacle. Um, and, uh, and, you know, like that's, that's a really important trigger, but then also having the spectacle cost, if you get to cast this for one BB, as, like presumably on turn three, if you have spectacle triggered on turn three, presumably you're ahead on the battlefield. So if you're ahead on the battlefield and cause you're dealing damage to your opponent and you also just on turn three and you get to play a four, four flying trample creature, you're gonna be really far ahead. Hey, Zeref going really good. Having a good time talking talking uh talking Ravnica Allegiance cards here. You know, it's it's like a three drop that doesn't die to Ritual of Soot, which is pretty important. Uh, you know, having that having like the four CMC to not die to Ritual of Soot is important. Being a four far four <laughs> sorry, a four four to not die to Deafening Clarion is important. So two two of like the main sweepers that are like the cheaper sweepers, uh, it gets to dodge both of them. Um, so yeah, would I say this is better than Chain Whirler? There's certainly a lot of different cards. I think I would rate both of the Chain Whirler and this card an A. Like Chain Whirler is an A, and I think this card's an A. I think they're on the same rating scale. Um, this is of course a uh, it is a lava coil target uh, for sure, but. Yeah, no, I, I like Spawn of Mayhem a whole lot. I think we're going to see a lot of Spawn of Mayhem. Uh, you know, it, sure, it's, it dies to removal, just like creatures do. Creatures die to removal. But this is a, a great card in, in the aggressive decks. Yep, it's exactly what Rakdos wants. All right, next card uh is an uncommon spire mangler 2b 2 1 flash flying when spire mangler enters the battlefield target creature with flying you control gets plus two plus zero that's an f does that flash flash is cool yeah sure creatures die to removal mud that that happens uh it just trades one for one yep if you had to buy out a card from the new set that you know that you that you know that's going to go up in price, which card would it be? Honestly, I haven't been looking at the prices of the, the cards right now, Nazil. But maybe like as we kind of go through and talk through this, maybe maybe you'll kind of find something. But I don't I don't know. because uh, I honestly haven't been looking at the prices, so I don't I don't know what the exact prices of the cards are. All right, Thirsting Shade. B for a 1-1 one, one lifelink. 2B, Thirsting Shade gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Yeah, it's got to be an F. I, it is like lifelink where you can get bigger, but it costs so much mana to make it bigger. It's a one man, it is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one lifelink. That's got to be an F. Maybe an F, F plus. It is kind of neat, though. Um, F plus. Art is an A. Next up is a common Undercity Scavenger. 3B for a 3-3. Three, three. When Undercity Scavenger enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, put two 1-1 on counters on Undercity Scavenger and then scry two. That's enough. 
Next card, Under City's Embrace, two and a black for an, an instant target opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you gain four life. So it's an instant speed sacrifice effect. Um, is that is that better than other things? We talked about how good the removal is in black already in standard. Um, I think this is still just an F, honestly. I don't think this is going to see any any play. I think I think Playcrafter is just much much better than this because of all the things you can do with Playcrafter and everything. I don't think this sees any play at all. Um, I think this is just F. There's just so much good removal spell removal spells in standard, and I don't think that this would you'd ever put this in a deck. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's good it, when they drop Niv Mizzet, sure. But that doesn't mean that you're gonna put that in your deck. You can just play so many other things. Just just play just play Eldest Reborn. Like, are you ever putting this in your deck over Eldest Reborn? I don't know. Yeah, there is a good life. All right, so the life gain. Okay, the life gain's a thing, right? So if you're playing against like an, an aggro mirror and you have to have your four drop out, so you have like your spawn of mayhem in play, and then you get to gain four life. I, I don't think this sees. I'm I'm still going F. I'm going F. I, I, I'm not seeing it. Um, next card is Vindictive Vampire. 3B for a 2-3. When another creature you control dies, Vindictive Vampire deals 1 damage to each opponent and you gain 1 life. It's like Blood Artist deals a damage to an opponent and you gain a life. But it uh, costs 4 mana. 4 mana is a little much. Yeah, it's just too too expensive. I think we're going F again. Um, if you really, if you, you know, like that could be like a jank deck that you want to build around. So like maybe like an F plus. Um, but yeah, four mana is a little, little too much there. All right, then we have an extra card here. We have the buy a box promo that is, yeah, this is the buy a box promo that's black. It's Haunt of the High Tower, four BB for a 3-3 flying lifelink. Whenever Haunt of the High Tower attacks, defending player discards a card. Whenever a card is put into opponent's graveyard from anywhere, put a 1-1 counter on the Haunt of High Tower. This is an F. Um, it's pretty silly they printed Nexus of Fate and they print this. <laughs> That's an F. EDH card. Yeah, I could go there. So overall, Black had lots and lots of Fs. There's a whole lot of Fs in Black, but um, there are some really, really strong cards. We had our first definite A in Spawn of Mayhem, I think. I don't think we've had it in A uh, besides that in the other colors. Pestilent Spirit is right there also, but like an A minus. Drill Bit is a really good card. And we have a few fun cards as well um, with some build around stuff like font of agony so and priest priest of the gods for sure has a whole lot of potential so there the top end of of black is really good but there's a whole lot to the bottom end that's just a lot of the commons and uncommons are just not going to be uh, what we're going to want to see in standard currently all right so if you were watching this on youtube thanks for watching make sure you tune back in for red for the the next color that we're going to be covering here um, to click on over to that. Don't forget to hit subscribe button as well. But thanks for watching.